Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Wilms Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Now, your Facebook uh, profile, uh, most of the posts are public, so... If they, yep. if, um, even if they're not uh, your Facebook friend, they can still follow you and get uh, uh, your posts on your your, your feed. Uh, in my interview with Victor, I alluded to uh, the the civil unrest happening uh, throughout the the United States and the attempts uh, by the, the the far left to import it here. This was all uh, triggered by the uh, the death. Uh, on the, the 25th of May by uh, a 45-year-old uh, uh, 45 African-American man, George Floyd, in Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota, uh, which is mm. a, a Midwest uh, uh, state uh, near the, the, the Great Lakes, uh, near Michigan and, and Illinois. It's a solidly democratic uh, state. Uh, it has a, a, it's voted for the, the Democrat presidential candidate, I think, at least the last five elections. Uh, right. has a, a Democrat uh, governor and a Democrat uh, mayor. Uh, the, uh, the head of the local de police, police department uh, is a Democrat, so is the district attorney. Mm. And everyone's seen the footage that that uh, police officer uh, had uh, his foot on George Floyd's neck for eight minutes, and including two minutes after he lost consciousness it's pretty mm. your blood boils Insane. watching it yeah and there were peaceful <laughs> yeah. uh protests justified but have now turned into nationwide rioting looting and acts of uh unprovoked uh assaults where some have actually uh been bashed uh to death uh now uh, as I was just telling my audience, you're the most reflective and considered commentator that uh, I know and have had on the, the show. I might sort of get a bit loose here, I feel. But the this senseless violence and the fact that it is excused by the, uh, by the far left uh, activists, uh, it... Uh, a lot of it is glorified by the the mainstream media. You have the the Hollywood celebs uh, wanting to bail out the the, the writers. You have uh, social media companies like Twitter not uh, uh, not uh, uh, hiding the, the the tweets or deleting the accounts of those who are organising these acts of violence, mm. but uh, by the uh, president of the United States uh, mm. uh, 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 restricting uh, his. Uh, tweets and and the fact that all the people loot uh, or endorsing the loot, looting and, and rioting and uh, violence they're the same people are saying that well basically they wanted the house arrest for the coronavirus to last forever and we're calling the anti-lockdown peaceful protesters the the most irresponsible people it is just like it's obvious now more than ever that everything is just upside down and logic just does no longer exist yeah look they're getting um it seems like the uh, perhaps left-leaning elites in the u.s they're getting very desperate right now i mean uh, to, to to go back to the start i mean there, there have been a lot of things they've tried to throw at the nation to bring it down particularly trump because it all reflects badly on him and it seems to me that russia gate didn't work uh ukraine gate didn't work or russia gate 2.0 and uh, on top of that, the pandemic didn't work, which is why they were so willing to throw out to the side. So they've jumped on board with this. I mean, um, it's an issue that's been boiling for a while, but they really hopped on board with it this time around. And just to give people a timeline, Tim, just because just a lot of people I know that will be watching this don't actually know what happened. So the, on, I think it was on, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was on the Friday, um, where oh, i think it was last thursday uh george floyd ended up getting he uh, he died he so this police officer racist police officer who had committed multiple offenses before 2007 mm. and wasn't wasn't prosecuted by democrats by yeah the way. and including amy klobuchar who was the well, uh, a prosecutor uh, in that state and run for the democratic nomination for president well no actually i i, I thought that originally and there was an element of truth to that but once I dug into it a little bit more, it turns out that she actually, uh, I think, became a senator or a member. Yeah, I think she became a senator 
uh, a year um, before that. So she wasn't actually the prosecutor at that time in 07 when he was um, when he was meant to be prosecuted, but it ended up going to a grand jury uh, where I don't think he got convicted of that. But the point of the matter is that uh, the reason I bring Democrat up at all is to show that they're, they're railing against systematic racism. That place has been like Democrat run for decades. Uh, you're going to have to point that out to me, including eight years of Obama, let's not forget. So when you've got, you know, Democrat governors of the state, get Democrat, you know, mayors that have come out and I would say stoked a lot of the fear in Minneapolis where a lot, a lot of this broke out. Um, and, you know, you can't really lay this at the blame of, uh, at the feet of Donald Trump while he's been office for three years. So painting this picture, we had these riots happen. Uh, because this this man had had been killed, uh, murdered, I would say, because that's what the charge is. And um, this police officer, he wasn't fired straight away. He wasn't uh, charged straight away. And uh, naturally, there were, you know, used as they usually are. There were pro there were uh, protests, and I use that word advisedly, on the Friday and the Saturday. And I think I do believe on the Saturday that's when it sort of switched over. And what we saw was uh, these Black Lives Matter protests get infiltrated by Antifa, the anti-fascist group that dates back to the and a uh, predominantly uh, white, overwhelmingly white organization. We should say it is. Yeah, it's very much a white organization, and um, this group is dedicated fundamentally to a, a Marxist sort of communist sort of ideology. And the idea behind this group is to pretty much, they're not anarchists. A lot of people use the word anarchist. They're not anarchists. They are people who are just trying to tear the system down and remake it in the image that they would like to happen. Now, there's a lot of similarities between this group and uh, white supremacists, believe it or not, but we can go there another day. I know to, that to they've tried to, story, to uh, uh, claim that there's uh, white supremacist uh, agitators in uh, these riots. There is zero uh, evidence of that. There is countless, uh, endless proof uh, of Antifa organizing it. Uh, and of course, none of their Twitter accounts have been suspended. Maybe a few, but not the big ones. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I've seen evidence that uh, a lot of the, the right-wing factions in America have been working with Antifa in America, uh, and it's just a matter of catching them because a lot of these sources, they don't want to get given up because then once these journalists give up their source, they no, no longer have their source. And um, uh, look, it, there's definitely something going on. It needs more investigation over there. But they have been ruled a terrorist group by Donald Trump, I think, on Monday. Um, and I'd strongly recommend Scott Morrison look into doing something like this similarly. How come no mainstream media journalists, like if they were actually proper uh, uh, journalists, why aren't they asking Scott Morrison or Peter Dutton, are you going to get ASIO uh, to classify Antifa as a terrorist organization here? That's what should happen. Well, first of all, they're definitely not as big of a risk here, naturally. I mean, they're actually doing some real damage over there and um, getting people killed exactly killed well, if you look at the the um, anti pro antifa twitter uh feeds uh, in australia some have names to them some are anonymous accounts they they uh, are basically excusing all of the the violence there which is normally if that was say if that was a a far right uh a twitter account in australia or endorsing uh a far right uh terrorism in another country uh twitter and the authorities would come down hard immediately no absolutely i mean the um if, if you look at it in america they'll, they'll go a step further they'll, they'll cancel bank accounts mm. of uh of 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 uh, people who they accuse of being alt-right, and I know that happened to one of the uh, Proud Boys in America. Now, um, these Antifa types, they pretty much infiltrated these marches, these Black Lives Matter marches, who have been uh, peaceful marches for the most part, and um, they they just slowly devolved over the weekend into some absolutely horrific disasters. And the footage that's come out of this, I don't even know how Facebook and YouTube have allowed some of them on their platforms and Twitter especially, but I've been uploading as much of it to my Facebook account as possible. So there's a very good 
stream of news on there if you want to get it get it from somewhere else um where i've uploaded everything i can find i've cro corrected myself where where I, i've i've misstated things like the amy Klobuchar thing i actually got that wrong but i corrected it yeah but, uh, you're yeah. you're very you're definitely under uh i would say underutilized job because you actually keep a record of all of this which is another reason why it's good to to have you on because you've got uh, uh, a lot of uh, this uh, down your uh, Facebook feed. It, it's full of. I use it for my own research sometimes. Yeah, well, I, I definitely think it's worth it going through it. I mean, every now and then I do scroll through to see how many people. I never, I never really reflect on how many people are liking the posts, um, but I do sometimes go through it because it's also sort of a diary for myself because I do chuck a lot of mental notes in there and I do put a lot of effort into some of the posts to put my thoughts down on paper because I, I often come back to it and say see I told you so mm. this happened and so look a lot of this stuff you know it's no surprise to you and me Tim because we've sort of had our finger on the pulse with Antifa for many many years in fact I put it in some of my posts that Antifa back in 2017 three years ago caused like some at least three million dollars damage in Berkeley when they had, I think it was Ben Shapiro. And oh, Miley it was Miley Yiannopoulos. Yeah, I, I, I remember uh, that. That was insane. There was fires yeah. and, uh, yes. and uh, that, of course, yeah, Berkeley, uh, one of the, the, the hot spots of uh, uh, Antifa uh, violence. Yeah. Of course, the, the, the capital and birthplace of uh, the modern Antifa movement is Portland, Oregon, where, well, uh, without, uh, I, I know that uh, in the past they've accused the uh, the Proud Boys of uh, provoking Antifa violence because they held uh, a end domestic terror rally uh, in Portland, uh, yeah. uh, Oregon. Yeah. Uh, but uh, without any uh, provocation, normally they have the city all to themselves. They're they're burning down their own city, Antifa. And do you really think that the Antifa types have the sort of uh, uh, physical skills to rebuild their city? Well, this that's the important thing. I definitely don't think they are. I think a lot of them are, are the derelicts of society. They just need a purpose. They're without a religion. And the, the problem is that I've got to stop you there, Tim. With these marches and often with these Portland marches that we've seen in the past that you and I are very familiar with, it can often get up to 80% of the people in these protests are not from these areas. Now, when I say that, I don't mean 80% of the people in the march or the protest. I'm talking about 80% of the people that are arrested, which is phenomenal. Mm. In fact, some places, I think in Minneapolis, the police chief came out, and you can all check this out on my wall. The police chief came out, and he actually said every person we arrested last night was all from out of town. Now, what does that tell you? What does that tell you about the people ruining the businesses there, people that won't have to ever pay, pay back or do anything to sort of help the community because it's not their community they don't care yeah it, it's certainly uh, opportunistic and and we've seen that uh, a lot of uh, organized uh, crime uh, has uh, taken advantage of the the looting you've seen the uh, the, the the pickup trucks uh, outside of, of mega stores uh, loading uh, things up and you, you see uh, uh, all this uh, vandalism and, and burning down of, of places, and you know, you'll see you'll see it burn down and get destroyed. Uh, but you can guarantee that the media they uh, they won't focus much on the rebuilding efforts. People have got to rebuild that. It's absolutely insane. It's insane. I mean, I, I just posted just today a video um, of of a couple that just got beat up outside the front of their store. First the wife and then the husband comes out and says, you just beat up my wife. Mm -hmm. And then they beat him up too. It's like, this is, this is crazy. And you know what? It's scary to middle America, Tim. Let me give you a statistic. Six million Americans have bought guns in the last three months. 40% of those are first time uh, buyers of the guns. They've never owned a gun in their life. In fact, some of them actually railed against guns and more gun control. But due to COVID-19 and the food shortages, which were, which were developing really badly, and also these attacks, it's gotten worse. And in fact, 40% of that 40%, so we're looking at around about 1, 1 1.1 million of those 6 million gun owners, they're women. Now, I'd like to see the feminists come out and, 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 and rail against this. 
That's 1.1 million women who are defending themselves at home against rapes, uh, getting robbed, their kids, protecting them. Like, what more empowerment would you rather see? Uh, there's uh, an extreme amount of irony uh, with these uh, riots and looting as well. Uh, I, I coined uh, the term on, on your uh, Facebook post that it's no longer uh, go woke, uh, go broke, it's go woke, uh, get looted, because we saw Target get looted in the past, they've uh, virtually signaled a <laughs> diversity, uh, same as uh, Nike oh. Day did the, the, the Colin Kaepernick uh, add, uh, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything while well, you've sacrificed a lot of the stock, uh, in your, in your stores, it hasn't stopped you, uh, getting, getting, uh, looted. And we've seen, uh, there, there's multiple footage of, uh, people when, when they're, well, uh, not just, uh, uh, business looting, but also home invasions as well. They're saying, but I'm on your side. They, they, they these people are savages. They, uh, they, they, they don't care. And these celebrities, uh, who are promising to, to bail out, uh, these looters and, and rioters, it'd be a different story if they, ca uh, they came to, to their mansions. Mm. Absolutely. No, I mean, mo most, uh, many of the looters are actually, they start in, in the inner city and they actually end up going to um, some of the wealthy suburbs and when they did you, there's some great tweets I, I reposted one today of a wealthy snooty elite saying burn it all down when he saw them burning minneapolis and some of the buildings there and then the next tweet which is like a couple of days later he says oh no they're, they're trying to but they're burning down my my neighboring closed off community but go go burn the poor people's places he literally said that isn't that crazy and snooty and everything that a lot of the leftists are actually against? It's crazy. Mm. It sort of reminds me of the the, the, the thing in the inner Melbourne uh, where a lot of the the, the lefties have uh, uh, this land belongs to the the uh, Wurundjeri uh, people. Sovereignty was never ceded. Uh, always was. Always will be Aboriginal uh, land. Uh, but they they'll never uh, allow a a local uh, Aboriginal person to to stay. Uh, on their land. I remember years back, uh, John Safran <laughs> did that, had a tribe mm. of Wurundjeri people turn up to like a few of those people who had those signs and it didn't, uh, the, the, the signs, uh, were, uh, they, they weren't as applicable as, uh, the people putting out, uh, <laughs> meant them to be. Look, it's pretty, it's pretty insane to be honest. I think, I think that one of the crazy things about these um these these riots that have been going on and, the, and and how they've turned particularly uh violent is the fact that there's so many people that are just ignoring the fact that there's black people that are going to get hurt everywhere mm. in fact some have died in fact today these last 24 hours we heard about a, a number of police black police force members and one ex uh chief police chief who died defending his store and he'd served on the force for 39 years. He was an old man with a family. Mm. And this, this footage got live streamed on Facebook of him getting gunned down. Well done. What did, what did you all think was going to happen? If, you know, causing these riots and this division over the 10, over decades, they all blame it on Trump for the division. For decades, they've been fostering this narrative. And the reality is in 2019, only nine black men actually died uh, unarmed black men and actually got shot by police officers nine not the tragedy but nine out of 340 million people that's what this is over really yeah. i'm not sure if you've ever read uh, ann coulter's book uh, mugged which was released in 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 2012 which documents all this uh, racial uh, demagoguery and uh, makes uh, uh, makes the point, and this was back in in 2010. We know it got a whole lot worse in his, his second ten. That racial uh, race relations and racial tensions increased under the the first uh, black president. And remember that that 2016, when Black Lives Matter uh, uh, was born, uh, there was similar uh, instances of of civil unrest, and uh, there were uh, uh, numerous uh, examples of uh, police. Uh, brutality uh, uh, against uh, unarmed uh, African-American uh, men. And uh, Trump uh, in 2016, he uh, sold himself as the, the law and order 
candidates. Ella, everyone, everyone sort of compared that election to the the 1968 uh, 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 Nix, uh, Richard Nixon's uh, election, when because there'd been two uh, summers of rioting under the previous president uh, Lyndon Baines uh, Johnson, who he started his Great Society Welfare Program in 1965, signed the Civil Rights and Voting Rights Act, but in 1967, the long hot summer, uh, there were nationwide riots in in 68 after the assassination of uh, Martin Luther King uh, uh, Jr. There were also riots as well, and so Nixon was able to come in 68 and say, "I'll uh, I'll restore uh, order," and of course, it didn't happen immediately, uh, like the same under Trump, but. Until this period of civil unrest, I was looking through the instances of race rights and civil unrest. Uh, uh, there's a lot in the 60s and 70s under Reagan in the, the, the 80s when the American dream was restored. There was hardly any. Uh, obviously, in 92, uh, the, the LA riots after uh, Rodney King's uh, beaters were uh, acquitted, but then a, not a lot until Obama's presidency. It took a dip under Trump's presidency, but it's back this year, uh, coincidentally an election year and also uh, uh, not long after the, the pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, a lot of, a lot of people are saying that, uh, you know, Trump's support in the black community is dwindling and he's mm. increasing racial tension. But I, I would argue, no, mm. Trump's actually more than doubled his black voter base, mm. more than doubled. Now, there's this saying, Tim, if black voters come out and vote 20% with Republicans, then every time the Democrats will always lose. There, there are some polls coming out with 27% of black voters coming out for Trump. Mm. I think this is a sleeper issue, Tim, and I think you would have seen some of my posts on this. I think this can really flick the election for Trump and be a winner. I do follow uh, Candace Owens. She's sort of the face of the the Blackset uh, movement from the Democrat uh, Party because uh, it, even uh, when they they because they they uh, uh, they were the the racist party uh, for uh, for most of uh, their 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 time uh, in the the United States. It's only when they they flipped uh, with the. Uh, Lyndon Johnson signing the, uh, the the Civil Rights Act in in sixty four and Voting Rights Act in sixty five that they claim no uh, we we are all for for black people's rights now but in all their since then despite the fact that they virtue signal that uh, they're the party for blacks now even though they're the party of slavery and uh, segregation but if you look at all these uh, cities that have been ruled by uh, Democrats had uh, states that have had Democrat governors, uh, black, uh, African-American blacks have done uh, appallingly. And all that seems to have changed in the Democratic Party is just their, their messaging. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the um, no one wants to have a, a discussion about why this is happening, basically, because this, this whole debate about the shoot police shootings, not only are we not discussing why the shootings take place, but we're also not discussing because there are often a lot of black people are making the argument you know, that reparations are due, that they're owed something from this society where there's no one alive that was a slave and there's no one alive that actually imposed slavery. In fact, even at the height of slavery, only 1.5% of the nation actually owned slaves. So we've got a problem here. We've got a problem. And I think only, only slaves were in the South as well, which is, which is what sparked the whole North-South war. Mm. Now, the, the, peop the people need to have the difficult discussions and the difficult discussions about why black people are in such poverty. You can d leave racism at the door for one second if you can. If you can't, then this discussion is not for you. We will come to racism in a second because we all agree that George Floyd's death was terrible. It was, we, were, we were all united on that before things got heated on Saturday. Now. No one wants to discuss the problems of the black single motherhood rate, how fathers aren't sticking around. Why did that happen? The expansion of the, of the welfare state, which has exacerbated that. In fact, before the welfare state got blown out of proportion, in the 60s, the black 
single motherhood rate was at twenty percent. It was actually it was actually lower than the white. Yeah, in the rate. in the fifties and and sixties, uh, their and standard, it out, standard it of living were were increasing. That it's mm. pe- as, uh, people around uh, today uh, they uh, they are not aware of that uh, fact at all and. Yeah, you're right. The the correlation with I mentioned the the Great Society uh, welfare programs that was just the the start of the the modern uh, welfare state. Mm. And where is it at now? In in the sixties and the fifties, about twenty percent single motherhood rate. Where is it at now? It's at seventy eight percent single motherhood rate. It's almost directly correlated with the expansion of the welfare state. And look, I'm not even, I haven't even touched on racism yet. There's a whole bunch of things we can talk about. In fact, one, one of the things includes the mass incarceration rate of, uh, that Democrats imposed, that people like Obama and Hillary imposed. And Kamala Harris remember, as well. No, Ka- Kamala Harris as well. Don't even get me started on Ka- Kamala Harris. Now, this, well, I learned all of these arguments because I used to be on the left, Tim. You know this. I used to be on the left and I used to support Bernie in 2016. These arguments are solid. The Democrat Party has done nothing, nothing for the black community. In, and that is why a lot of them were propping up Bernie. They just got rid of Bernie. So all of these politicians, including Obama in his recent article, saying that, I understand there's racism in this country. Now you need to go. And it doesn't matter if the nation is you know, racist to its core and racist in its blood. You need to go out and make vote the right way. Well, how is that going to fix anything? Because you guys have been in power for decades in these places, mm. whether it's the police chief being a Democrat, whether it's the governor, whether it was the president for eight years. And now you're saying, oh, vote for Biden, the guy that imposed all the expansion of all of the imprisonment population back in like the 90s. I don't think that's going to happen. and I don't think it's going to happen. We haven't got much uh, time left, uh, but I now want to focus on the the warped uh, mainstream media and social media because uh, uh, let, uh, let's have a look at it, it, this. This all started when uh, uh, Twitter decided to uh, link to a CNN fact check about Trump's tweets about mail-in uh, ballots, and that's mm. when uh, Trump uh, he had that executive order threatening to well reinterpret uh, section uh, 230 of the Communications Decency Act, which basically mm. protects Facebook, Twitter, YouTube from all liability because they are a, a platform. But that section also gives them uh, some a editorial discretion as well. So they get the best of both worlds there, which is not afforded to, in fact, that there was a, um, uh, there was just a, a local uh, a, a court ruling yesterday that uh, 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 that Australian media organisations are responsible for uh, Facebook comments underneath their stories in the defamation of uh, Dylan Voller, that uh, Aboriginal uh, uh, youth uh, criminal uh, in the in the Northern Territory. Uh, yeah. So the, the, these social media companies, they've had it sweet for for so long and mm. uh, but they're allowed to well it, it, the the exceptions for when they're allowed to, to editorialize they're uh, it, it, they're not uh, they're not broad and of course that was the the next day they they decided to to double down uh with uh uh put as saying that uh, trump uh, was uh, glorifying violence when he said these thugs are dishonouring the memory of George Floyd and I won't let uh, that happen. Just spoke to Governor Tim Waltz and told him that the military is with him all the way. Any difficulty and we will assume control. But when the looting starts, uh, the shooting starts. And that, to me, was an observation. It's quite a blunt and confronting observation, but this is what we've come to uh, expect uh, from Trump. And we've seen Trump derangement syndrome go to a full level now, where basically the, the left and the media, they're, 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 they're like a, a sibling, which just does the opposite of what you do. That, that, that's how uh, puerile they've become. Look, that, the, the fake news on that front was absolutely phenomenal. I mean, 
when the shooting, when, when the looting starts, the shooting starts. That's the quote. That quote is not Trump's. He didn't trademark that. That's a cultural reference mm. that was made in, in, I think it was the uh, LA riots. That had nothing to do, that wasn't Trump's. He didn't, he didn't create that. That was a direct reference, I think, to one of the police commissioners there. Now, that is him showing that he's tough on, he's tough on this. And in fact, that's, that's how his style has been with a lot of his politicking. In fact, we've seen him in work for over three years now doing these sort of things where he, he comes out tough and often the opposition backs down. We saw that with Korea. We saw that with China often, and he signed a deal on China with that. You know, and he did that with Iran. Now, I don't see why people are surprised by that now. I think they're just looking for sensationalism. But it's like I said to start this interview, Tim, the left progressive establishment, they are really flailing right now. In fact, do you play chess, Tim? No. You don't you don't play chess. Ooh, do you play any uh any any video games? I don't have time for that sort of stuff anymore. <laughs> have you ever played a game where in order to achieve your chief objective, take out the king, for example, in chess, sometimes you have to sacrifice a lot of your pawns to get there. Well, the Democrats are so, have they've run out of options. They've got no option right now, the media and the establishment to get rid of Trump. They've run out of everything. Coronavirus didn't work. Russia gave one and two didn't work. Now they're trying to go for the jugular because they are desperate. They have given up the debate on guns that is gone that is absolutely gone now it's gone in terms of the debate on coronavirus it's done the whole you notice how during the coronavirus situation all of the leftist ideology all of the professors about their gender ideology that all flailed away mm. it turns out that that men were more susceptible to the virus than women that means there's a binary well the statistics <laughs> only had uh, binary uh, on the uh, uh, binary breakdown. Mm. Well, it did, but but it did have a trend, though, didn't it? It had a trend that men were more susceptible, and it also had a trend that being fat wasn't that great. So all the all of the uh, you know, I'm proud of my curves group. Turns out that biologically, when 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 it's put to the test, you're actually more at risk. And in fact, that's one of the reasons, Tim, why it's not racist that uh you know black america is being more disproportionately affected by the virus because they are more obese they've got more heart conditions there's a whole bunch of issues well you had uh, plastic uh, nancy pelosi her face uh, nearly melted under that uh mask uh, say oh well, she she <laughs> fat shamed trump which they were supposedly against saying that somebody like him should uh, who's morbidly obese in his uh, age range should uh, uh, wear a mask and uh, uh, they uh, loved all the the governors that uh, were were locking down uh, their their states and the mayors were locking down the uh, the cities remember they they hated the the anti uh, lockdown uh, protesters who were peaceful even though they had yeah. guns and that not one bit of property was damaged and remember how they all thought that a civil war was going to break out in Richmond Virginia with the gun rights rally nothing happened uh, there uh, uh, but uh, they all thought that these people were dangerous and 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 irresponsible oh you want a a, a hair you're demanding a, a haircut uh, how dare you uh, but apparently uh, social distancing curfews house arrest doesn't matter anymore yeah they were saying you're killing grandma you're killing grandma get home well they, get they are up. killing people now these writers exactly and now look at now look at this for a second isn't that interesting? And I did a big, I did a big post on this. First of all, you lock people in their houses, you destroy their jobs. And I use that word advisedly. They destroyed the jobs because if you've been building up a company, building up the capital, and you lose all that, you can't pay the loans, and all your it's, savings it's, are gone. It's you not as as simple as in normal times to just get another job. There are no jobs because you shut them all exactly. down. Yeah, when you destroy a job, it's gone. It's gone. It's not coming back. So there are over 40 million people, 40 million people in a nation of, with, with a workforce of about, I think, 220 to 250 million. 40 million are jobless. 25% unemployment rate. This is crazy. Now, it's the perfect storm. All of these cases, these uh, most of the, the corona cases were all in Democrat-run states. I mean, if you look, if you compare 
New York State to Florida, where Florida has three three million more people, hmm. and they're very comparable. It was a way better run in Florida, yeah. which was Republican Florida run seems to be to... the 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 place to be. Uh, Democrat Governor uh, Ron DeSantis, uh, Republican uh senators and you have there well down in miami a bunch of fiercely uh anti-communist uh, cuban americans and it actually is one of the the few like multicultural melting plots so like florida is if you if you're looking to a place to sort of uh settle into the united states amongst all this chaos florida is the place to be uh, it's where well, the chair of the Proud Boys is in Rico Terrio. It's also where Laura Luma uh, is uh, as well. Uh, so yeah, that that mm. should be the 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 new America. It, it, it might it might well be. And look, this is this is the reality of it. When people leave California, they say take someone with you because they want to get all of these people out. It's very glamorous in California, but people don't know how bad it is there, and mm. people are fleeing there. In fact. So many people are fleeing from there to Texas. It might even flip, flip Texas. Yeah, blue. that's the thing now. So make Isn't sure that, that crazy. Yeah, make sure they don't go further east to Florida. <laughs> exactly. In fact, there's more. There's actually more Republicans in California than Texas. A lot of Texans don't realize that. Mm. But um, yeah, that's the reality of it. It's, uh... And we didn't. We also saw a Republican congressman uh, uh, censored by Twitter as well, because uh, he said about uh, uh, because Trump, he, he, we already discussed, he's going to uh, designate Antifa a terrorist group. This is what Matt uh, Gates said, a Republican congressman from Florida. Now that we clearly see Antifa as terrorists, can we hunt them down like we do those in the Middle East? And apparently, that glorified uh violence uh, uh, when uh, uh george w bush said that he was gonna smoke out the the 9 11 terrorists uh, from their their holes in the middle east uh, twitter wasn't around then but would they have done that to uh uh his tweets uh people celebrating the uh the killing of osama bin laden uh well, i don't think twitter was uh, woke uh, back then but it's the it's it's the same thing yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I wouldn't go as far as to uh, say something like that. I mean, Matt, Matt Getz is a bit sensationalist. I, I like him very much, but he, he, that, that was a bit out there, the uh, hunt, hunting down terrorists like that. Mm. Um, because you need to always remember a lot of libertarians out there and conservatives too could use a dose of this. It cuts both ways. When you This is what happened under Obama, and this has been one of the great critiques of progressives on the Obama years because they said the expansion, the Patriot Act, for example, is very unpatriotic. The spying mm. that was done on Americans, you know, because when, when, you, when you want someone to look into your affairs because they, they you suspect something of that person, you can believe, if you think that they're not looking into to your affairs as well, it, it's, you're ignorant because this power cuts both ways. And it's very scary because you don't get it back. And uh, people uh, have uh, demanded that uh, Trump's Twitter account be terminated for uh, glorifying violence. Who decided that Jack Jackass Dorsey, as he is called, is now the arbiter of what is, is moral and is the global arbiter of what is glorifying violence? Like, who, nobody elected him. Uh, uh, the same with uh, Mark, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, all the all, all these people like why do they elevate these unelected social media people as superseding the United States president? It's ridiculous, I, I, you know. But you know, a lot of people have been calling for that for a very long time. I think uh, the first I heard something like this was from Sam Harris, who said uh, that he didn't act, and I like Sam very much. Who, who said that he thought that Twitter should delete. Trump off Facebook and ban him because he uses his Twitter account to threaten other countries, nuclear war. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a good point, right? Mm. But it is a free speech platform. Mm. Uh, there's, uh, I, I'm not sure if you've uh, uh, seen the, uh, the comments about what if World War II uh, Twitter was uh, around. Uh, Winston Churchill uh, calling uh, uh, Hitler a, a, a wicked man, a monstrous uh, product. Uh, Twitter would probably say, oh, that's uh, 
glorifying violence, uh, threatening another a country. And he also said, we, we will fight them on the, on the beaches. That's, yeah. that's quite an inflammatory uh, statement there. <laughs> Churchill wouldn't have lasted long on, on Twitter. That's pretty, yeah, when you put it that way, it's pretty funny um, in that context. No, I, I, I think that uh, Twitter, all the sense, sense, uh, the censorship stuff, it's coming full circle now, which is another area where they've seeded ground because we now see doctors, for example, with the uh, coronavirus being censored. In fact, I don't know if you saw this today, but there are a bunch of doctors that signed this letter saying that uh, it's okay to, to protest because it affects the health of the nation. And this is why people don't trust the experts sometimes. Now, I'm, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I, I, you've read my feed. I like to keep a very balanced mark on this, but I understand why people are skeptical of these things. And it's crap like that. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Is there anything else that uh, I need to express my, my outrage about? Uh, uh, on this, oh yes, uh, the uh, uh, the local uh, Antifa Marxist groups trying to import uh, Black Lives Matter rallies here. There was one in in your home city, Sydney, uh, last night, where of course nobody was issued a a a, a COVID uh, infringement uh, notice. I already mentioned that there's going to be one on Saturday where there's already an indication none of them will get fined for breaching social distancing. And I watched the ABC last night and they immediately decided to uh, report on Aboriginal deaths in custody and uh, uh, mass incarceration, fueling the local uh, flames. And I, uh, Tim Blair on Sky News last night took the words out of my mouth. Uh, uh, weren't the left against the Americanization of our culture, but they're wanting to uh, import this. African Americans and Aboriginal Australians, they're not the, the same race like they just have similar skin complexion this is why i keep a diary tim on uh on i think it was so do we have sorry recently the uh remembrance not the remembrance day, the remembrance day or sort of uh where, the, where kevin rudd did that apology mm. um and apparently today is marbo I, day as well uh the high, uh, high well, court decision go. 1992 the, well there you go well anyway i did a post a few days ago i was replying to stephen dr stephen shabira great 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 bloke very smart and um i was i made this point exactly exactly and this was before the, this man uh, george floyd died i said blexit will come to australia it's only a matter of time and these are the people who will be leading it and it's it that's the reality of it the reality is that black people will leave the democratic party we will see that in the stats and the exit polls in the us and we will see that eventually in australia when they realize that these people in the Greens, in the Labour Party, they have done nothing for the Aboriginal community. Now, there's there are is there it's the same it's the same issue with the Aboriginal community. There, there are genuine concerns there that need to be resolved and heard. You know, they're people, but they're not being resolved by pandering and people who just get the vote and then use it for nothing, except for beating and getting more power. Mm. And this is the thing I want people to watch out for. It's, it's, it's literally about, it's about what's right and wrong. It's, it's not about partisanship. It's about the truth. Uh, maybe it should be called abs, absit uh, in Australia. We already have uh, uh, de facto absit uh, advocates <laughs> in uh, Warren Mundine, uh, Jacinta Price, uh, Anthony Dillon. Uh, yeah. is, and it's, uh, of course, it's all of, uh, you know, I both know that uh, the all the the, the protests uh, about uh, uh, Aboriginal disadvantage and, and grievance uh, uh, they they all take place in the the, the inner cities uh, with the uh, the mixed uh, race uh, Aborigines not out in the remote areas like uh, Alice Springs, which uh, shows you that it's it's more about a uh, ulterior motive and agenda rather than genuine welfare. Mm. No, look, I, I think I think it's absolutely ridiculous that, um, you know, we haven't tackled these problems yet. We've had them for a very long time, but no one, no one is willing to have the discussion except some of those people you listed. And, you know, it's been phenomenal to watch them talking. I mean, I saw Justin Price a few months ago live, met her. She's a lovely lady, and she's really trying to tackle these problems. Mm. 
And I, I hate it. I hate it. We have the same issue with Islam where there's a group of Muslims that are great. They're lovely people. They pull out the best parts of the Quran and they live lovely lives and they're great neighbors. And then you get, you know, radical Islamic terrorists. Now, when you try to have the discussion in a public context and say, this is the line of radicalism and this is the line of, you know, moderatism or being, you know, living a lovely life. We can't have that discussion when someone says, oh, you're being racist or, oh, you're being Islamophobic. Same with these issues. Oh, you're being racist. You, how dare you say that they have, you know, high, high levels of, you know, incarceration rates or they don't know how to raise their kids or, you know, this woman doesn't need no man to, ra to run the family. It's like, are you kidding? I'm trying to solve this issue. There is a correlation between some of the problems these kids have and a father not being around no, that's me beating up men. I'm saying men take on more responsibility. That's important. That's empowering for feminists as well. Now, I think that a lot of the issues that we're seeing in Australia will, can be solved. And it's incredibly, incredibly possible to do it if we, we are willing to have the discussion. And that goes back to the words of John Anderson, the former Deputy Prime Minister. We can't get good policy out of a bad public debate. And that's the reality. And Tim, if you don't mind me just touching on just one last thing before we finish, I really want to nail this home. The protests in the US, they started off as protests, peaceful protests. Then they devolved terribly and, and it just, the madness grew and it's gotten insane. And this Antifa group, they've been, don't underestimate them. They've been incredibly sharp in how they've manipulated the people and manipulated the crowds and prepared for them, including things like, and I'm sure many of you would have heard this already, placing pallets of bricks where there's no construction around. They put a pallet of bricks in the middle of a road and they might put a fence or two around it or mm. no fence. I've and noticed they'll those. know that exactly. And they'll know that the, the protests are going to come through there. Oh, great, a brick. And then they throw it at a window. In fact, there was a black woman. She was saying, How? She, she went to this car full of white kids and she was she she, know, she knows the brick came from them and she's waving at them she's saying why are you bringing these here our boys they'll get in trouble for, for for using these and throwing these why are you doing this and they say i'm sorry on this and that the antifa types they're there and they need to be called out in fact they've done a number of different things like prepare molotov cocktails and leave them out They've, they've, they've left water out so that people don't, they don't run out of supplies. They stay hydrated and keep and keep going. We need to call this out because it's incredibly dangerous. A lot of the things I've been railing about and you've been giving me a platform on, like socialism in our universities, what Drew Pavlo in Queensland is fighting right now, this is going to boil over. And the, the longer Drew this... Is supporting the, the Black Lives Matter protests in the United States... I but he, he does he, he does draw some some distinctions as well though, and I do think that the biggest distinction that needs to be made is that there are genuine concerns, but there are also the violence must be one hundred percent condemned. And people like Majid Nawaz have been doing a very good job at that. And I just I just think that the problems the problems that we've got in our society can easily be fixed if we have the discussion. Now the conservative establishment in Australia. They need to recognize why this is happening. And we can see it a mile off. We can see it coming to Australia if it's not entirely here yet. We still have time. All of the conservative commentators and con commentators around the world that have come to Australia, like, like Douglas Murray, they've told us, you need to watch out for these things. If we can't come together and address them, it's... We're stupider than the establishment over there because we had years, years of preparation. I've known for years and I, I'm just a kid. <laughs> I'm just a kid compared to some of these establishment conservative types. We need to take some real action or we will lose this country because this mm. isn't a movie. You know, this will happen and peace is very fragile. Yeah, it's. It, it's hard to, I know that uh, Trump ran on uh, Make America Great Again, his slogan now is is uh, make uh, keep America uh, great, but certainly things aren't uh, great 
right now. But as I said before, uh, I think not to you, but uh, to, to Victor previously, uh, that uh, 60s and 70s uh, with the, uh, the riots in the United States, the stagflation, uh, unemployment inflation, the oil crisis, uh, pollution, everyone thought the world would end by 1980. Then it was morning in America again and the, the, the 80s. It was a, a wicked, awesome, prosperous time in, a, in American uh, history. And yes, we do follow America's uh, lead in a lot of things. That was, uh, we were in a dark place uh, in the late 70s, early 80s in Australia, but uh, uh, we came uh, through it. Uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't just through a natural cycle. Uh, people had to change, campaign for change, and uh, leaders were elected to change things. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, can't, I couldn't kind of disagree with that at all. Oh, thank you so much for uh, venting with me, uh, Joel. It's, yeah, as, as I said at the beginning, it, it, like, it hits you with this that, wow, like, it's just all of the things that we've been railing and frustrated uh, about have just come to fruition uh, at once, and, it's, and, it, and it still hits you. It's very scary, um, Tim. I've been, I'm, you know, on a personal note, I haven't been getting a lot of sleep this last two months. Mm. Um, this year's been insane, and uh, yeah, look, it's it seems it seems like it seems like it's all coming to fruition now. I mean, there's a reason. There's a I believe there's a reason why a lot of this just caught people's attention who are looking for these dangers. And I think that I think it's entirely possible that um, you know the tide's turning against us mm. very swiftly i mean it's been turning against us for a very long time but as i alluded to about the chess game we could be looking at a very bad situation right now while america right now is is occupied with those riots i mean i i might leave this prediction here that i put on my facebook we could be looking at an in some kind of attack by china on the u.s I mean, there's there's this saying from this Japanese general from World War Two. He says, "Behind every reed in America, or grass reed, there's a gun." Well, all the guns right now they're, they're pointed inwards, mm. and so who knows what yeah, could happen? Uh, China, uh, uh, their uh, leadership is able to or well, point to. Uh, the citizens of their country and say, uh, well, they're, they're trying to teach you that uh, democracy uh, is the, the best form of government. Look at uh, the US uh, on fire uh, at the moment. And uh, of course, they keep uh, getting stronger. Uh, they've come out of the, uh, even though it started the, the pandemic uh, uh, in China, that's where the virus was born in, in Wuhan. Uh, they're, they're, they're certainly gearing up uh, their, uh, their ascension hasn't, uh, hasn't taken a, a, a dent. And we left out the UK as well. Uh, Mark Collett uh, summed it up well that the UK is now Soviet snitch state and that uh, you, you ha I'm, I'm sure you've seen the thing where you have to uh, clap for the, the NHS workers when they leave home to, to go to work and you don't want to be the one who, who stops clapping first. It's, it's that old, <laughs> where clapping for Stalin. Uh, you don't want to be the first one to stop cla uh, clapping. They're in just a whole new level of insanity there. No, absolutely. And it's, it's very scary. I mean, Oh man, there's a lot to say about the UK, but uh, man, they it might be definitely too late for them, mm. not for us. Well, it's been another epic uh, show of Wilmsfront. Uh, thank you, Joel, for uh, joining me for uh, this uh, second half. And as I said to, to Victor, who's a Sydney cider as well, hopefully I can come up soon, shake your hand, in, embrace you, uh, start get, getting that physical contact uh, back that we've been prevented uh, from from doing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and it'd be great to meet Victor as well. He sounds like an interesting bloke. Mm. Well, we're, we're, we're still playing the, the waiting game in both our states to when we can fully uh, reopen and don't have to uh, give our, uh, our life story to uh, a premises we want to enter. Yeah, absolutely. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous, Tim. But no, look, it's been a pleasure, Tim. An absolute pleasure. I always appreciate coming on. 
All right. Stay safe, uh, not from the coronavirus, but uh, from from big government and uh, totalitarians. You too, Tim. You've got it worse. <laughs> See you later. Slightly. Slightly. <laughs> A lot. A lot. Oh. <laughs> I'll see you later, Tim. Take it easy. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows. And to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.